Okay, so now we're going to talk about the menstrual cycle. So if we, the menstrual cycle is also known as the uterine cycle because it's what's going on in the uterus. Okay, so basically what it is, it's the changing changes that are going on in the endometrium. Okay, now it's under the control of the estrogen and the progesterone that's secreted by the corpus luteum. So basically the ovary and the corpus luteum is what's controlling what's going on in the uterus. Okay, now there's three main phases. So one is the menstrual phase, and it starts when um, menstruation starts. So it starts when the period starts, when the bleeding starts. Um, one to five days. Okay, proliferation or proliferative is day six to 14. So the um, functional layer gets thicker. Okay, and then um, an estrogen is being secreted. And then the third stage is the secretory, which is day 15 to 28. So progesterone from the corpus luteum is being released. Okay, and the functional layer is growing again. Okay, so here's the relationships between the hormones, what's going on in the ovaries, and what's going on in the uterus. Okay, so day one to five. Okay, so if you look at um, the ovaries, it's the follicular phase. So the follicle is, is growing. Okay, so GnRH is coming in. It's stimulating the anterior pituitary, and the anterior pituitary is um, stimulating the production of, well, FSH and LH, which that's what's stimulating the primary follicle and the secondary follicle. Okay, so the interrelationship between the hormones. So I think I was talking about this when I, when I stopped, and now we're starting again. But okay, so we want to look at um, how the ovaries are going to affect what's going on in the uterus. Okay, so day one is going to start when menstruation starts. Okay, when your period starts. Okay. During that time, okay, the estrogen levels and the progesterone levels are pretty fat, flat, okay, but we're releasing follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone so that the follicles develop. Okay, so day one through five. Okay, now day six through 12, okay, the follicles are continue, continuing to develop. Okay, so um, estrogen is going to be gradually going up as the follicle matures, okay, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone are, are kind of flat, okay, or a drop in FSH. Um, estrogen is going to be going up as this develops, okay. Now the wall of the uterus will start getting thicker again, not the wall, but the endometrium of the uterus will start to get thicker again, okay. All right, now, when ovulation occurs, okay, estrogen levels are going to be really high, okay, and luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone are going to be high. Okay, so increase in estrogen above the threshold stimulates the hypothalamus and the anterior, anterior pituitary, and it causes a surge in luteinizing hormone. The surge in luteinizing hormone induces ovulation. Okay, so ovulation and luteinizing hormone. So if someone's checking to see if they're ovulating, they're going to be looking for luteinizing hormone. Okay, then what's going to happen is, okay, the corpus luteum is, is formed. Okay, and it's going to secrete a whole bunch of estrogen. Okay, it's also going to secrete progesterone, and it's going to secrete inhibin. Okay, now the inhibin is going to stop us from making um, LH, GnRH, LH, FSH. And then um, the progesterone that's being released from the corpus luteum is going to stimulate the production or the increasing thickness of the uterine wall. Okay, now if the egg isn't fertilized, okay, the Corpus luteum just is going to get smaller, and the hormone levels are going to go down, and then the cycle starts all over again.
Okay, now we'll talk about vulva. So the mons pubis is, I have pictures, so we'll show you. Okay, um, let, let's see. Okay, so the mons pubis is the fatty mound over top of the um, pubic symphysis. Um, the prepuce is the um, kind of like the, the hood that's over the clitoris. Okay, labia majora is going to be on the outside, and labia minora is on the inside. Okay, so here's the hole for the urethra, here's the hole for the vagina and anus. Um, if you look deeper, okay, you'll be able to see the pubic symphysis, okay, the clitoris, um, the vestibular gland, Okay, and those are things that are going to release secretions. Okay, now breasts. Okay, so it's a mound of tissue overlying the pectoralis major. Okay, the nipples surrounded by the areolar um, suspensory ligaments are going to attach the breast to the skin and the muscle. Okay, so when it's not lactating, it contains little glandular tissue. Um, there's lots of ducts and lots of fat. Okay, so here's the lactating breast, and what you're going to be able to see are, um, you should see lactiferous ducts. Okay, so there's the ducts. Sinuses are spaces where the milk is going to accumulate, and then there's going to be, there's adipose tissue, there's fat, but there's also going to be mammary tissue where that's where the milk is going to develop.